It's Didi on the Spot. Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you appreciate and enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Eric Calvert here from the band Switchblade Jesus. Eric, how are you doing? How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory? What got you into music and what inspires you musically? Oh, man. Uh, for the most part, it was my parents in the beginning. Uh, my dad was a huge metalhead. Slayer, Exodus, and all that good shit. Uh, I was born in 82, so you know, I missed a lot of the good metal for the most part. But, uh, yeah, when I hit, you know, I'd say about 90s or so, my dad got really big into a lot of uh, White Zombie, Pantera, and shit like that. And so uh, one year he came home from uh, Pantera's first tour with uh, Cowboys from Hell. And he was just, you know, he lost it. Showed me the album, and then after that, Bulger came out. And, you know, that's when I really lost it. Uh, a lot of it, too, was the movie Heavy Metal. You know, mm-hmm. that, that animated comic movie that, that I think was pretty, you know, pretty awesome. Yeah, that was. Uh, and then uh, uh, got into a lot of Seabury Vaughn and stuff like that, too. But, uh, yeah, it was the early stuff. You know, the early metal that really got me going. You know, it was just uh, it's just something that was pissed off and, and amazing. Uh, first concert, uh, dude, I was in, like, Man, I was in middle school. My parents dropped me off for uh, Sepultura, Typo Negative, and Ozzy. And and after that's really when it started. And it, you know, for the most part, it's just been a constant, you know, thrashing, music, uh, having fun, you know, and all that good stuff. And, you know, that's what really led me into it was, you know, my parents, you know, their, their fondness for it and their, you know, their, their at ease and, uh, uh, willingness to understand that I'm not going to be a jackass and to drop me off at a Sepultura concert, you know, in middle school and just say, you know, you know, don't fuck up yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And that's, you know, really what started a lot of it. Oh yeah. And then, uh, I stole my dad's, uh, Cliff Amal, uh, it was VHS back then. If, if nobody's watched Cliff Amal, like that's the early Metallica stuff. It was all before Cliff died. Cliff Mall and Pantera's home videos, dude, those those really set it off. And those really showed me, you know, the, the the fun times that you can have in a band. And that's what I've always tried to uh, keep it, you know, it's, it's the fun times. It's got to be business, but you got to have fun with it. Once you start losing the fun, you know, it, it becomes shit. So mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. You know, I, I luckily I learned off of those. <laughs> yeah. So was there a song in particular that really inspired you? Or was it just a mixture of all those song, of all the songs from those artists? <sighs> Um, you know, the, uh, shit, man, it's hard to pick just a song. I mean, for, for the most part, Sabbath, you know, the first time I heard Sabbath, you know, that was a game changer for me. I mean, you know, the first time you hear that, that, that double chord, you know, it really hits your spine. So I think, you know, when my pops first showed me, uh, I mean, you know, as a kid back in the day, you either learned, uh, smoke on the water or Iron Man. Mm -hmm. So he showed me Iron Man. So, you know, that was it right there. I have to say that was, it was Iron Man for the most part, and then Paranoid and all that. And then, you know, I got into, you know, the heavier stuff. But, yeah, I'd have to say pretty much, you know, the early Sabbath, or I shit in the Sabbath for the most part. That's really what got me. Yeah, the thing that got me into metal was Metallica's Master of Puppets was the first one that I heard. And then I was like, oh, what yeah. the hell is that stuff? That was, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So, how did the band Switchblade Jesus come to be? Oh, man. Uh... For the most part, it was a bunch of, you know, random dudes hanging out. You know, all, we're all good friends for the most part. And uh, we met up at a, well, it was, I was living out of town and uh, moved back into town. And me and the old, the, we used to be a five piece. We used to have a singer and uh, another guitarist. And uh, the other guitarist was, you know, my best friend. And we grew up skating and getting in trouble and, you know, blowing shit up as a kid. And so I moved away, but when I moved back, we started hanging out again. We started jamming, and uh, uh, the sword, you know, just came out. They just dropped their new album, and that shit was cool because you know it was a little bit different than a lot. You know, radio rock is still radio rock with Dragon Force. I don't, I don't listen to the radio rock. Last time I know, Dragon Force and shit like that was real popular. But you know, a lot of that stuff was was you know, flown out. You know, the the regular FM. So when uh, when 
the sword came out, it was something a little different. It had that retro Sabbath feel, you know, you know, Melvin's back in the day and shit like that. So it was slow. It was groovy. It was killer. So uh, Clutch was coming into town and they're opening in Graveyard. It's Graveyard's first U.S. tour. And so uh, we all met actually at that Clutch show. And it was me and Billy, our old guitarist. And that's when we met up with his cousin, John, who's drummer now and so always will ever be. And uh, I don't know if Jason, I'm pretty positive Jason or Mr. And we all met up and got hammered. And then the next day, we met up over at Billy's place. And we just set up shop and just started writing shit. Just for the hell of it. It wasn't, it was, like, this band wasn't, I mean, it's whatever, it's whatever. But it wasn't supposed to be, you know, we're going to make a band, we're going to hit the road, we're going to tour and all that kind of shit. It was just, you know, dudes getting together, trying to raise hell and trying to get the cops caught on us for the most part and seeing how loud we could be. Because in this town, there's no whatever the hell we are. You know, this town is is grindcore, uh, early thrash, uh, just, just, hev- just heavy, hateful stuff. So nobody was like... Fu Manchu or Caius or Monster Magnet or anything like that. Nobody did that here. So we were, since we were slower, we decided just to be louder. And, you know, with this music, it, you know, that Doom Stone or wherever the hell it is, it's always worked out to be a little bit louder than somebody else and you'll get heard. But uh, that's how that came to be. And we're just dudes hanging out, just trying to write some music and just, you know, whatever. We, uh, said we were doing a lot of instrumentals and we didn't want to be an instrumental band at the time and we decided to throw in a craigslist ad craigslist ad you'll find the weirdest fucking people yep so jesus christ i gotta say uh, we have had bands on here and three of them have said that they've made their band off craigslist and every time i hear that i say do it with caution you might be able to find a bandmate but you will find some weird ass people there too just like you said dude like so we we had like three different tryouts one dude, fucking shit, dude. One dude, he looked like he ate puppies for breakfast. Jeez. Like, I've said this story many times, but I'll always say he is just a steroid freaked out dude and just, just looks, I mean, not in the devil in the good way. Just, you know, you just don't want to fuck with this dude. Mm-hmm. And so he kept calling and calling and calling because we <laughs> called him back one day. We just ignore him, ignore him, ignore him. And we had one dude, uh, he came in and he got so fucked up. Uh, we lost him. And by that, it's like, we, like, we're, we're, we're all playing with our heads down. We're, we're jamming and we look and he's gone, but we can hear him. And his ass is pa- not passed out yet, but, uh, fucking laying down in the bathtub, Jeez. you know, singing with that. So we kept trying trying out and we found this dude named Pete, really great dude, love him to death. Uh, and that's how old well, we had another buddy, you know, before him, but, uh, Pete's really what set the band, you know, into what we were looking for kind of you know what we were looking for at the time and uh that's how you know that's how this nonsense got started <laughs> did you long story short yeah did you find that not being a part of the specific scene that you guys are around did you find that difficult to sort of establish a fan base for you guys or did you find it easier knowing that you guys were different from other bands so that people who were maybe weren't interested in that main genre could maybe flock to you guys what, what was your experience with that like it sucked trying to find a niche, trying to find bands to jam with. It was great, or it still is great, because we're the band that floats in between everything. We can play with Reverend Horton Heat one night, and literally this is how it is. We play with Reverend Horton Heat one night, and the next night we're playing with Goat Horror. We'll, we'll play some Doom Festival, and then the next night we're playing a Thrash Festival. I mean, the, the cool thing about us not being tied down to a specific genre is you know we can float with that so us not having a scene technically here we didn't we didn't latch on to somebody and copy them the only downside is we didn't have other people to grow with Mm -hmm. so for the most part we play outside of town we play in houston we play in austin dallas san antonio in texas wise you know we don't play that much in corpus that's where we are corpus christi if if anybody's wondering uh just because it's it's different in this town we we're liked we're loved i mean people don't throw shit at us so i mean that's that's good we've never been booed off the stage we've always had a great crowd response you know we always have a you know a good crowd response for the shows in general 
but uh, to find another one of us, it's difficult. I mean, there's there's another band here in town, the Southern Revival, and they're starting to do uh, some down kind of sludge shit. So it's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, it was difficult in the beginning. It really was. We tried to, uh, I mean, to the point where we almost compromised our music a little bit just so we could fit in a show better. It sucks to say that, but. I mean, you kind of need you kind of need a good show in general. If you just want to be the band that just blazes through everything and just punches people in the face, fuck yeah, cool. But if you're trying to grow and you're trying to reach out to other people, maybe not put your you know 15 minute long masterpiece into that set. That's going to probably bore people and walk them out. Yeah, that's just how it is. So I mean, we we had to adjust, you know, how we did it. Now we just I don't. I, we don't give a shit. We'll, we'll just, it's, it's cool because we've somewhat reached a state, you know, in, in, in our town that, you know, people know us, people like us, and they know what they're getting when they get to the show now, because now we're, we're a completely different band from what we were. It's, 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 we've changed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how did the name Switchblade Jesus come to be? Is there a story behind that? Or was it just something that you thought was a cool name? The name for the most part came about as a bar fight. <laughs> so uh john and jason were uh they're in a in a rockabilly band called the high speed heartaches mm-hmm. they've always been playing together they've known each other forever they're everybody goes out and gets hammered and you know and does stupid shit those two those two can wreck house <laughs> and they really can and so uh they're at a bar and they have a buddy named David and uh, they called him Jesus because this dude looks like Jesus, you know, whatever, you know, picture that, you know, they've painted of him, some white dude with long black hair. Mm-hmm. That's what he looks like. And so fight breaks out. Everybody's beating the shit out of everybody. And one guy slaps, you know, the guy uh, tells John or Jason, one of the two says, hey, don't don't worry. Jesus has a knife <laughs> and he pulls out his knife and uh well you know the fight the fight goes on for a little bit else but yeah that's how that's how the name came about for the most part so you know the band started as a hell racing you know situation so Mm -hmm. we might as well keep up with it right yeah i have a question when you have that hellraiser image sort of where you guys just like to you know just be all out do, are you ever worried sometimes that shows that fans might take it the wrong way and might escalate it to a certain level that isn't um that isn't what you guys intended has that ever been a problem for you guys no because we weren't i mean we 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 want you to to lose your mind i mean yeah if if you're beating the shit out of somebody we're gonna stop the song mm-hmm. we're gonna stop the stage we're gonna tell you get the hell out but we want you to use that aggression that you had from work, that you had from losing your girlfriend, that you had from your shit, you know, job or whatever, you know, let's say you're frustrated. We want you to come to our show and just lose your damn mind. Our stage is your stage. If you want to jump on stage and jump off, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Just don't step on our pedals or, you know, bump to the drummer. You know, you, everything should be done in a respectful way in some sort. And at a show... If it's not, if it's not acceptable to lose your mind at a show. I mean, where else can you? But yeah, you can't beat the shit out of somebody. Yeah. Just, just, just because you know we're 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 singing about you know whatever the hell it is, and you decided just to punch the guy next to you. No, 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 fuck that. That's bullshit. We'll stop him. Like, hey, man, get the hell out. Yeah. You, that's it's it's all about a family energy and a family destruction for the most part just so when you leave you're just like what the hell was that that was awesome i i feel like i never want to say religious experience because of our name but because we're definitely not a religious type band uh i i I want it to be just a good thing so yeah I, i i want them to have that energy i want them to raise hell you know to, to a degree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, you know, for, I, I understand that completely, man. So when you guys are writing lyrics for your songs, who comes up with the main, mainly the, the lyrics? Is it you or someone else in the band? It's usually me for the most yeah. part. Uh, I, I try to stick to a lot of uh, personal stuff and uh, life-changing movements. And uh, I try to stay away from... 
the fantasy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the dragons and lore and swords and shit like that. I love that stuff. I mean, you give me Conan all damn day long and I'll sit <laughs> yeah. and I'll read all of them. But uh, uh, it's, I don't know, for, for the most part, it's all personal experiences. Like uh, the new album for the, you know, for the time being, well, no, it's pretty much done on that one. Uh, for the new album, it's uh, it's all about you know the scene, about how everybody's sounding the same, and everybody wants to be like the next so and so, instead of trying to carve their own path and trying to be their own entity. Everybody, and you know, it used to be when people would pull from five bands, now everybody just pulls from one band again. So a lot of it's personal experience of what I see, what we go through, uh, band stupid shit, uh, girlfriends of the band, uh, uh, just whatever it is. That's fun stuff, though. Yeah, absolutely. So when uh, one of the questions I also like to ask is when you're coming up with song titles, there are two basic responses that I usually get. One is you come up with a song title, and then you work the lyrics through that title. Or the second one, which is where after you've written all your lyrics, you decide a song title from that. What would you say is the main uh, main choice that you do in when it comes to song titles? For the most part, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the lyrics than the song title. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean... Unless you go into it, I mean, you you can't tell somebody that there's a wrong way of writing. Mm -hmm. But unless you go into it, you know, this is going to be a song about this. Then, yeah, I can understand about uh, having a song title ready for it and going in. But usually the way we work is uh, we write the song, we write the riffs, we get the feeling for it. Uh, I get an idea for what I want to write. Then I'll write down, I'll write down like four or five different drafts and go through different ways and then uh, we'll bring them in. We'll we'll run through them, and then from that, you know, we'll decide if, if that if all of those worked. Then we'll pick a name for that. When we're when we're recording, everything gets fake names and everything gets you know bullshit names. But uh, yeah, I like to try to pull uh, the name from the actual song lyrics itself. It just I don't know. It feels like it completes it for me because I like to make everything to have some kind of start and beginning. So it just it needs to feel natural for me. That is. That's totally. So when you guys are performing live, one of the big questions I like to ask on this show is performing live, what does that feel like for you? We get so many answers on here that describe it like a drug unlike any other, just knowing that you're providing entertainment for people and providing a release and giving them joy. What is that feeling like for you personally when you're on stage performing? Honestly, it's just the whole reason I do it, and I know the other guys do too. I mean, it's 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 you can't – it's a nervous – sometimes scared excited uh enthralled and you know that you're there you know at the moment it's it's everything i mean it's everything it really is i mean even if even if you're just doing an open mic so you have to go on stage you have to go on stage even if you're doing karaoke you have to go on stage because putting yourself out there you know just so naked and just so it's it's such a great feeling when people come back and they tell you you know you know, that was awesome, dude. You know, I'll, I do it for myself when I play. I mean, I, of course, you know, we're going out there and we're playing for fans. And we're playing for, you know, people that came to see us. I do it for myself. I mean, me and Chris, we flip each other off on stage. You know, I yell at John uh, where John throws drumsticks at me. It's, I mean, you got to have fun. And I think that's really what it is. It's, it's those 30, 45 minutes that I can be myself. And I can look at the crowd all pissed off. I can flip them off. I can try to get them, you know, into it. It's, it's, it's those, yeah, it's those 45 minutes of this is exactly who I am. You know, the person you're talking to is to calm me for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when we're on stage, it's, it's a whole nother ball game. And I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. Even if, even if you're just doing karaoke, get up on a stage. It's so much fun. I absolutely yeah. I've karaokeed once, and yeah, it was it was definitely a great feeling for sure. When you're performing live, does time seem to go by really really fast, or does it seem to stand still, or is it a mixture of both? Oh, it's fast. Mm-hmm. It's so damn fast. Like I, the, the the shows that are only thirty minutes, it doesn't feel like thirty minutes. Like when we get done, like uh, I'll look at John, and, and uh, he he seems somewhat confused because we ran through the whole set. And we're like, you know, like, I guess it, I guess we're done. I guess that was it, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's pack up and go because it's so fast. You're not the the, the cool thing about a band is when you've been doing it for so long, you all kind of link up to each other, 
and the whole groove, the whole set, because we 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 rehearse twice a week. We rehearse this when it's time to do shows. You know, we rehearse those sets, you know, vigorously, and so it becomes second nature. So when you're when you're you know been jamming with you know some dude for six seven years, if not a little bit more, you know, it just becomes second nature, and so it links up and it goes. You don't think about messing up. You like once once the once his click starts, you know, with the sticks, everything else is a blur. It really is. Like I hear that click, 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 or now we actually start the set off with uh uh we use live patches from movies and kind of stuff like that, pulling from like neurosis kind of feel. You know, more depth in the show and more, you know, more energy. But uh yeah. Once his clicks start, everything's a blur, and I don't remember the show. I never remember the show after we played it, even if it was the greatest show in the world. Like, I'm, I'm recording our sets behind me on my app, so I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy was cool. I remember that guy, because you don't remember shit, dude. It, it goes by so fast. I wish it went by slow. I really do. If I could enjoy that moment, like, just sit there and enjoy every moment. That's why I think blues players sit on chairs, mm -hmm. so they could just sit and enjoy yeah. every little moment of that show. Yeah, that's a good theory for sure. And I, yeah, I would, I just wish that's why when I say like members of bands that don't really play that many, like you see those, some of those big bands, like those big pop bands where the guy plays like the harmonica or he plays some insignificant instrument. I was like, those guys probably have it the best because they're actually able to sit back a lot and just enjoy the feeling, which is, oh, which yeah. I mean, is, I can imagine, I can't imagine really just how great it is, but I can just picture it's just such a great feeling. But when you're, um, before, before a show, when you guys arrive, do you guys have any traditions that you guys like to do? Are you superstitious at all? We have some bands on here that talk about they like to have a few beers, they like to have a couple shots, or they like to stretch. Do you guys have a routine down, or do you guys just like to wing it when you get to the venue? For the most part, it's just, uh, we tell each other, don't fuck up. <laughs> and then we go on stage, we flip each other off, and we start. Uh, it's, 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 I mean, I don't, I mean, I drank a little bit before we play. I, I'm, I'm at a two beer max. So yeah, for, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all have one beer each. Uh, they'll all take, you know, one beer on stage and I'll take some water and nonsense. Plug in, look at each other, track start. We flip each other off and then we go. I mean, it's, it's, we're there to wreck house. I mean, I, I think we're, we're constantly, ready for this and constantly always in the moment and in the mood so i don't think we need anything to kind of like ritualize us to get us ready for it just it's you know we, we know it's it's there you know we, we've never been the the like at one point when we had pete like he, he would try to get us in a circle and with the arms like the football players like yep. ah, i love you buddy but i can't do that like, <laughs> it's it's you know, you're off to the side at some shit fucking bar and y'all are doing like the, the quarterback hustle. It's kind of like the dude uh, walking into uh, the local show with his laminate pass and he's through the opening band like, oh, bro, come on. <laughs> Don't look like that. Sure. But uh, yeah, I think for the most part, it's a, a beer and flip each other off and then we go. And that's that's pretty much our ritual <laughs> if there's any. Has the flipping off part always been a thing or did it just happen one show and then you guys are like, oh, hey, that's a great idea? It just happened. And it just made us laugh. Like, uh, now I do it like in the middle of, uh, 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 of a breakdown that me and Chris have and I'll look at them, I'll flip them off. Just trying. it's, it's, you're, we're trying to catch each other off guard is really what it is. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll look at John and he'll give me a stupid face or he'll throw something at me. And it's just us fucking with each other on stage is really what it is. It, we're not trying to mess each other up. We're just trying to make each other laugh because it's, 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 it's fun. It's, it's real. It's really fun to be on stage. You know, in the beginning it was nervous, but nah, nah it's, it's the greatest thing ever. So I, I, I think it just kind of happened and then just carried on. From that. <laughs> so we love to hear first show stories. What was your first show performing with Switchblade Jesus and where was it at and how did it go? And I can't remember if this is our first one or first one. Uh, it was, in, it was definitely in Corpus. See, I can't see. I, I'm, I'm going to go with this one as our first show. So, uh, we had, uh, uh, we're in South Texas, dude. So, so Texas is nothing but barbecue and just everything. So there's this barbecue cook off. This might've been like our second show or third, but I'm just going to go with this one because it's, it's not bad. And so, uh, you know, the first shows were just us 
trying to make sound. This one was like our first real fucking show. You know, we, we felt we're ready for this. We're prepared. You know, it's this barbecue cook off. We're like, shit, we're at a cook off. Yeah, this is this is like Texas. Shit, yeah, this is gonna be amazing. So we roll up in there, and it was some VFW, and it, the stage was a uh, eighteen wheeler flatbed. Wow, and uh, it wasn't that wide. So John's ass, his his <laughs> throne, kind of stumbled off. So we went and got uh, we went and got uh, some uh, plywood, and we threw some plywood, and our buddy Julio. He held it through the whole show. <laughs> and so I, there's pictures of him somewhere like kneeling down on one knee and kind of like the like the the Atlas holding the holding the world up. And that's pretty much how he was. He's holding this fucking, you know, plywood. So uh, John doesn't fall. Uh, my foot went through a uh, went through a, a, a hole in the in the in the flatbed. Dude, it was it was it was horrible. It was so horrible. But it was so awesome, too, because it felt like, you know. We we're doing it because the, the first shows really were open mics. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. So the first shows were really open mics. And then like our third or our second or yeah, it was our second open mic. We're like, man, we can do real shows now. We're OK. We're 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 not as bad because one dude uh, did like uh, this is at an open mic. One dude did like uh, uh, Bible hymns. But mm-hmm. he was playing metal type guitar, but it wasn't like he was trying to follow. It was just da 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 da, and just Bible him. So after that, we're like, we can do a show. We'll do a fucking show, and that was our first show, and it was just a train wreck. And the uh, uh, here we're here in the south, and uh, it was just the hottest. It was the hottest thing ever, dude. Yeah, that was our first show, man. Mm-hmm. I kind of forgot about that one. Yeah. There's another one where our singer got lost uh, in a gay pride parade, and that one was awesome. Could you tell us about that story? That sounds like an interesting story. Well, yeah, that, that's a good story. So this was our first festival, and it was with Kyle Essa, Orange Goblin, uh, Gates of Slumber, and a couple of others. So uh, we, after we got done with the show, everybody went off drinking. We couldn't find Pete. And we're, we're getting all these pictures and all these pictures of him dancing around. And he's up on this, uh, he's up on this float dancing around. And we're like, where the fuck are you, dude? He's like, dude, there's this gay pride parade and they're all having fun. It's fucking awesome. Let's go. And so, uh, half the dudes went and met him over there and partied on the parade. And the other dudes went and got something to eat. It was, it was a very fun night. It was a very fun night. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was, uh, uh. It was a very interesting, but yeah, that was, that was a big show. And, uh, we opened up like round four and a lot of the bands we played with were, uh, out of Houston too. And that's where we met a lot of our friends out of Houston. But yeah, dude, we just kept getting random pictures of him. It was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and after that, he, uh, he became Pistol Pete. Oh, great. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So now we're going to go to our audience favorite part of the podcast, the questionnaire that I like to do. It's more of sort of like a getting to know you. So I'll ask you five questions and we'll get your answers down. And then we have a poll where we'll, I'll add up the questions from all the podcasts. But so for our first question, out of all the songs that have ever been written in the history of music, if you could have come up with one song, what would it be? If I could come up with one song, it'd probably be Sentiment of the Universe. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's that's the heaviest shit that's ever been wrote. I mean, I think that would be the main riff. Either that or something from Yob, because everything Yob writes is just fucking glorious. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say Symptom of the Universe. That would be the, that'd be the number one. Yeah. All right. So for our second question, out of all the artists that have ever lived, dead or alive, doesn't matter, you can choose either or. If you If you could perform live with any artist or musician for one show, who would it be? Oh, it'd be Dimebag Daryl from Pantera, mm-hmm. just in a in a heartbeat. I've met him, hung out with him, shook his hand, got pics. Greatest individual in the world. That would be it. Like uh, Jimmy Hendrix would be a fucking another one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope it would be amazing too. But no, it'd be uh, it'd be Dimebag from Pantera. Just, I mean, that's who I looked up to as a kid. I mean, that's that's you know that was the that was the the hierarchy. That was the I mean, he's what Texas whole, you know, Texas metal, man. He's the king, and he'll he'll always be in my opinion. 
Yeah, so Dimebag. Where'd you meet him? Oh, Corpus, Houston, San Antonio. Uh, I didn't get to meet him in Dallas. My buddy used to actually work with him in Dallas. But yeah, all the shows. Luckily, I had buddies uh, that worked for, uh, uh, they're not called PR teams now. What the hell are they called? Uh, Not tape traders. But basically, like Relapse, Roadrunner, uh, who were they with? They were with Electra. All these bands would uh, get local people to run uh, posters and promos and uh, and tapes. Like uh, a buddy of mine used to work for Roadrunner, so we'd go to his house and he'd give us like we we heard Slipknot, uh, Static X, and somebody else before they actually came out. Just because oh, Street Team, that's what they're called. Oh, they're yeah. the Street Team. So I had a lot of buddies that worked on street teams and they just got me backstage a lot. And, uh, luckily they, luckily it's Texas and it's Pantera. So, (laughs) I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard to know somebody that knew somebody. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, dude, he ruled. He was such a cool dude. That's that's awesome. So for our third question, out of all the venues on the planet, if you had your pick of playing at any venue, where would you perform? Somewhere in Europe, <laughs> somewhere uh, maybe Hellfest. Uh, I would love to play Hellfest. Uh, that that would be the shit. Roadburn would be amazing. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give a shout out to House of Rock here in Corpus because they're just they're they're great dudes. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I want I want to take these guys to a good show. Like we've been doing some really good shows when, when we brought. Uh, Chris on not too long ago he's like every show he's been gone I was just better and better and he's loving it it's fucking amazing so my goal is the three of us to play a really really stellar show just just for uh, just so I can see their faces and uh, and make all of us happy like that yeah so I'd say Hellfest Some, somewhere in Europe somewhere big and massive and just metal and hateful and amazing that's what I want yeah, my personal choice is Slain Castle in Ireland. I just love the view of that. Oh just, yeah, yep. See, yeah, that didn't come to my mind. Yeah, good call. Good I, call I've dude. seen all the concerts there, and I was like, yeah, I definitely got to go yeah. there. So now we get to the real nitty gritty. What is a guilty pleasure song that you enjoy that you think that most people wouldn't believe that you enjoy? Oh, anything from Etta James. Mm-hmm. At last, uh, of course, is one of my favorites. But anything from Etta James. Like I, I am nothing but just strictly Motown and anything that she does, cry. Oh my god. Yeah. Anything from her. That yeah. that throws people off for the most part. They they don't expect, you know, me to listen <laughs> to her. But yeah. That's Have you her. ever thought about doing a cover of At Last? Uh there's a couple of covers that we've we've talked about and a couple of Motown ones. I don't know if I can pull that one off. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd love to try. I'd rather pull off like a typo or a uh, dancing cover. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if I if I could find the perfect edit song. But see, the thing is, is I would respect the lyrics mm-hmm. and I'm not going to change it from uh, him to her. So it'll be like I'm singing to a dude and I'm totally cool with that. I yeah. got no I got no issues with that. Yeah. So uh, I think it'd be fun. Yeah, it definitely would. Absolutely. And then lastly, um, if you had the power to erase one musician's work from existence, the person wouldn't die. Let's just say instead of becoming a musician, they'd become like a plumber or a carpenter or anything. They would still be alive. But if you could delete their entire music from existence and then no one would ever knew, know that they ever played music, all the memory of their songs would be wiped from everyone's brain, who would you do it to? Man, I only listen to good stuff. Um... Oh wait, Katy Perry. Anything that Katy yep. Perry does, <laughs> I got a buddy that loves her uh, as a joke, and uh, he'll wear the shirt to the show, like when he <laughs> plays. Because I like in Corpus, we're Selena. It's Selena. Mm-hmm. That's 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 it. she's from Selena. I'm I'm gonna be getting a Selena tattoo all in corpse paint, just as my tribute to Selena. You know, mm-hmm. of Corpus, not tribute to her mainly, but just tribute to this town. But I have to say, Katy Perry, I can't stand anything that she's done. Like I, I have issue with uh, with bubblegum pop. I mm-hmm. don't know why. And she's just she she's got a a tone in her voice that really that really gets to me. So yeah, 
Katy Perry. Yep, absolutely. That's a safe one. Yep. So now, where can people find your guys' music? Switchblade Jesus. Do you guys have Spotify, iTunes, YouTube? Where can people find it? Definitely Spotify. Uh, I'd love it if more people checked us out on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Uh, iTunes for sure. You can get us at Best Buy website, Amazon.com website. Uh, a lot of uh, Bandcamp. Definitely go to Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. You can find us at Bandcamp. Uh, we're, we're with Ripple Music, so we're on their Bandcamp as well. So uh, pretty much just type Switchblade Jesus and you'll find us. I mean, if it's, if they're not talking about the book, The Cross and the Switchblade, they're talking about us. <laughs> yeah, so I'll definitely leave a link to all that stuff down below. Do you guys have any new music that you're working on? Yeah, we're actually done with, with the, the big bulk of it, for the most part, getting it sent out to uh, masters from what we were talking about end of October, early November, from what the studio says they're good for. And it's it's just a barrage of sludgy, doomy, thrashy riffs, you know, taking cues from uh, Kyle Essa, Mastodon, Black Tusk, but, you know, still keeping with our group. Like, I, I don't... I don't want us to be a Southern metal or Southern rock band just because I, that's just not what I've ever associated with. So the new music now has a lot of, uh, it's got, it's got more, uh, Pantera Southern than it does like, uh, monster magnet or corrosion conformity. So it's, it's just a heavy onslaught of doom and hate. It's really cool. I like it. Yeah. (laughs) So do you have any, uh, upcoming shows that you guys are playing now? We have a few fans in Texas. I've had two other bands on here from Texas. So we have a little bit of a fan base down there. Do you have any upcoming shows? Uh, we got the local one here in town that we're opening up with some buds that are doing their uh, record release. Uh, that's September 13th. Mm. And then, uh, October 13th, we're going to be at division brewery in, uh, Fort Worth for uh the heavy mash festival and that's with a band called duel uh great electric quest doomstress is going to be there uh mountain smoke i mean dead hawk I mean, just a shitload of bands so i mean it, that, that'll be a nice little festival that'll oh. be fun to sell yeah and that great. was october 13th yeah yeah so definitely let us know when you guys have that album coming out we would definitely love to plug it for you i mean it was great having you on switchblade jesus everyone again go and check these guys out we will leave all these links down below i highly recommend you guys go on and again eric i mean it was great having you on are there any bands in the area that you would like to just give a shout out to before we wrap it up here uh everybody from houston funeral horse uh those are my buddies Mm -hmm. and then uh everybody out of dallas shit you caught me on edge uh (laughs) curse this is amazing hell fury out of austin holy shit i love those guys so much so check out hell fury out of austin curse this out of san antonio Mm -hmm. uh man all you gotta do is uh go to band camp and look up texas doom and you'll find every greatness that's that's popping up around here uh, Vermilion Whiskey out of Louisiana. They're they're really good buddies of ours. And then shit, if you don't know about the Maryland Doom scene, check out the Maryland Doom scene. It's just nothing but stack good stuff out there. There's like so many band names that I'm forgetting because yeah. I can't even think of it right no now. No problem. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so absolutely. Well, I'll recommend all those bands too, and I'll definitely give them a shout out. And again, thanks again for being on the podcast. And again, everyone, Switchblade Jesus. Look these guys up. The links will be down below. And this is DD on the spot, Ryan Johnson signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Later, bud.